Yeah, exactly. So. Um, it also has been pointed out, Josh, that we are both wearing yellow and we both have facial hair. So, guys, it, these these are these are the official chair league shirts. Yeah, check it out. Yeah, official chair league shirts. That's why we're both yellow. And as for the facial hair, I mean, I have no explanation. I am considering, and I have been for some time, just shaving it off. Whoa. So maybe I'll do that Whoa. because it seems like every time we cast and we accidentally <laughs> shirt a line, we get comments. Because we about, don't plan this. We don't no, plan I, this. I didn't. We, we said nothing to one another. No, okay, we, we just got on the Skype call and we're like, oh. We got the same like, shirt. Oh, oh yeah. my. Yeah, yeah but, I mean, if it makes people more comfortable, I can go change. <laughs> but I, I don't really want to. I mean, that would be... That would require a lot of energy. I mean, yeah, I mean, it would require change. some. I could just, I could just get off camera, and get change, but. But I know, mean, I, that that sounds that sounds difficult. I gotta rep the chair league. Yeah, you gotta rep the chair league. I'm 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 here because I love it. Yeah, I I agree. I'm excited. This will this will be fun. Just just one game tonight, guys. We're just waiting for one more player to join the lobby. Uh, this is going to be Team Maroon versus Please Ban Murky. Wow. We're playing Murky. <laughs> Apparently, they're gonna play Murky. I hope so. Like I, with a name like this, if they don't play Murky, I'm gonna be a little disappointed. I I think, I think if your team name is Please Ban Murky. The idea is that the other team needs to believe that you will actually play Murky so that the ban happens. So yeah. that's probably part of the strategy here. They're they're talking about how they're going to play Murky. Yeah, and it's like really they're, they're even saying it. They're saying we're we're playing Murky, so ban him. Yeah, exactly. They it's, just it's want... it's kind of like throwing out the throwing the gauntlet, so to speak. Oh, yeah. It's they should just name their team <laughs> Team Draft Advantage. <laughs> you know? Like that—that that would be essentially what what we're talking about here. Because I don't think they're actually going to ban Murky. They're not actually going to play it. I mean, yeah. So. No, I uh, I I would love to see a Murky. I haven't seen a Murky in forever, so I would be I'd be completely okay seeing a Murky. I guess you haven't been playing too much unranked draft then, because I seem to see them all the time, and they're always bad. They're never TBK <sighs> levels. Yeah, I I. I'm not going to lie, I do play a really good Murky. You do. He's, uh... It's like I my, dream levels of good. It's He's my dude. Like, I I play him whenever I get the chance. I, I normally don't pick him in Hero League because people get really mad. And I I don't want to make people mad right off the bat, you know? It's it's just not, not good. Uh, what else can we talk about while we're waiting for our I'm, our last I'm trying to pull here. these. I'm trying to pull these teams up on the Chair League website so we can. But can you not? Oh, here we go. Okay, Maroon is ranked 11th. Ooh. At six and two, in Division Two. So wow, that's. Uh, Please, Van Murky is ranked 13th at seven and three. Nice. So this is actually going to be a pretty close match. Um, that I should mention. Yes. That those rankings are out of 129 in division. Dang. Two. So these are some of the top D2 teams. Yeah, and their actual ranking is part. It's it's based on their rating, which is based on their wins and losses, but also the quality of the opponent that they won and lost against. So it's not just that they're like tied with a bunch of people at six and two. Dang. That yeah. is that is I'm I'm excited. Yeah, this should be this should be really good. These are you know both pretty high. You know what's even more exciting, Josh? What's that? Riley Co Coyoli. Riley Co Coyoli. Yeah, I think it's it's like a riff on like Wiley Coyote, I think. That I just can't pronounce. No, no, it's not actually. It's it's um their name is Riley yeah. and they're Koi. And they're so coy that at the end they announce Ole. Oh, okay. Ole, you know, like Riley Koi Ole. Man, yeah, that's, that's an easier way to say it. He's got a level seventeen murky, Josh. I I don't know. Is that is that real? 
I don't think that's real. I'm calling it. It's not real. You don't have a level 17 murky. Are you are you oh. calling him out? So Pick, that... picks or it didn't happen. What I'm saying. I I mean maybe it did. I I don't know, but I I don't think it happened. Level 17 murky is like you hate yourself <laughs> and <laughs> you really enjoy like the masochism involved in playing murky. Yeah. I think that's what that is, so I... Oh, goodness. All right. Uh, everyone's here, so we're going to get these uh, draft links ready. All right. Good to go. Did you watch any of the games, TBK? Uh, I watched uh, the Gale Force Esports, uh, Gale Force Esports series. So you didn't and... watch the My Insanity series where they played... No, Chuck I Ball? did not. Oh, oh my show. gosh! Yeah, I need it, I need you to compile me a. Oh, I'm I'm going. I'm actually going to do that. A list of games that I need to watch, including the the back four, for the the finals. I'm actually going to do, like a best moments, of the tournament type thing. Yeah. Or, and then I think I might do like a put like a viewing list at the end of it for like games to watch. Okay. But so many of the best moments are going to be in the last series, <laughs> to be honest, because there were some super clutch moments. But anyways. All right. Draft links are out to the captains. Switching over. Yeah. Please ban Murky. Please ban Murky. All right. Oh, they even, like, capitalize different letters in their name. I like it. Yep, it's, good. it's it's impressive. All right, we're in. Team Maroon versus Please Ban Murky on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Team Maroon with the first pick, first ban. So let's see what they end up doing. I feel like it's gonna be something with pointy ears, Josh. I don't I don't know about you. There's a high probability that a pointy eared character will be banned. Yes. Uh, so like I honestly. We are on Tomb of the Spider Queen, so yeah, I was gonna say that's a it's I, a good first ban for them. I would not ban Illidan because they will probably okay. So now Illidan's available. This is yeah. this is kind of the situation. So do you first pick Illidan? I mean, I would not on this map. No, not at but, all. But I think he's still playable. It's just that you would want to get him later in the draft, and we're gonna see Azul. And Zul, this is probably one of Zul's best maps. Yeah. This is this is a really good map for him. Um, so really, Tuesday really. Murky, yeah, he, he can counter with the false. They must really want the false dad. Um, like, false dad's be, a really good a really good character. It's just uh, like the global part of the hero's kit is a bit weaker on this map because yeah, it's, just because it's so small. Yeah. Um, the gust is still very powerful though, so I'm interested to see what kind of comp they build this into. Yeah. If you have a really good fall stat player, they just they crank out the damage. So, and so Rhaegar is going to get fairly high prioritization as well. Not a super surprise. Still considered really the best support right now. Um, yeah, it's actually getting nerfed. I don't know if you read that. Yes, him and Kalethos. Actually, yeah. the uh, Kalethos, the Kalethos part, I think is good. Honestly, I, I think it's a positive change for the character. He's getting a slight. He's getting well. He's getting a halfway decent single target damage nerf, and he's getting a Whoa. slight AOE buff. Okay, so Team Maroon, they're gonna run the Asmodan strategy. It looks like uh, I would not be surprised uh, to see maybe a Johanna here because Johanna. Yep, and there it is. <laughs> Johanna Bam. pairs. To, it, I, she pairs so well with that strategy, right? And once you pick that Asmodan, you have to grab that Johanna too, because Please Ban Murky would probably have banned her out. Otherwise. It just feels so early to take Asmodan. It's really. it's it's definitely tipping your hand early, because it's not something you would necessarily normally ban on this. Map. I mean, unless unless these teams have played each other, I didn't yeah. actually check to see if they have played each other, but. If they have played each other, it's possible they know about the strat, or they've watched their games, mm -hmm. and so they know, um, like if somebody else casts the game. So uh, Tassadar like is going to get taken out. They've never played, so 
Okay, so this is this is just just an early Asmodan, um, but I mean it's definitely the the comp they have right now definitely fits with this Asmodan comp. Yeah. So now, what do you what do you do from here? I mean, you have Uther available as a support if you're a Team Maroon. I guess Please Ban Murky could still get Muradin, by which is really really good to be able yeah. to get him this late. And I, I assume they'll probably grab him. They don't necessarily even need to prioritize him now because Team Maroon's probably not going to pick him. They need damage right now. Um, I expect Maroon to probably grab Uther. The Divine Shield to be really good. Murky's grabbing up that Li Ming. Uh, she actually lasted through the ban phase, which is impressive. Yeah, we actually, um, at, at, at Worlds, we actually saw, like, a, a real drop-off in Lee Ming picks. Like, Korea is very kind of picky about when they'll take her. Mm -hmm. So, it's kind not, of interesting. Not like the NA, because NA prioritization uh, of Lee Ming is very high. And NA, NA likes that high-octane uh, play style, so that's good. But yeah, so now we need a tank, probably, for Please Van Murky, so I don't think they're going to be playing Murky. probably be Muradin. Yeah, I don't think it'll be Murky. Sadly. Sadly. The, maybe, the ruse maybe, did not work. Maybe it's one of those situations where the player really wants to play Murky, but his team is like, no, man, like we're not doing it. Sorry. Nah, like, bruh. It's, it's on a question. We're yeah. not doing it. So um, Maroon needs a healer. Like you said, probably Uther. I think Karazim is good here. Uh, I because With all the melee they have, it definitely is. The thing, the thing about Karazim is you can catch like a Sonya that dives in off guard with seven side if you go that way mm -hmm. um, or you can go palm like that's the both heroics are so viable right now um, but I could see people defaulting to Uther because Uther is like feels a little bit more stable in some situations with all yeah. the like active abilities he and has the divine shield is very good too but they are gonna you're gonna get your wish Josh that's They're good I love I love this character he's so much fun to watch and, and to play but. yes and so now just kind of looking at this comp, it seems like Team Maroon needs a range damage of some sort. Um, maybe, I mean, Vala is still on the table. I uh, could definitely see her getting picked up. Um, you know, God forbid we see Jaina played. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I like Jaina. I do. And she's not bad. She's just kind of outclassed at the moment. So, it is going to be the Vala. Vala. So, Vala just the old standby <laughs> just kind of <laughs> when a few choices are gone she's basically the best of the rest type thing well, who else was really on the table Lunara's on the table Tychus is on the table but I don't really think you take Tychus against this because there's no, not you there's don't even not know health. they might have even run a tank like you don't even know they probably will but like you haven't even seen it yet so you yeah. can't really assume that it's gonna happen um no. Yeah, I guess a lot of the rage damage is out. Sylvanas is another person that we often see yep, uh, picked up as a range damage out. healer. So yeah, I know. I think I think Follow is probably their safest pick there, just from what we've got laid out and what's been banned. Um, and plus, Reign of Vengeance can really do some work as well. Yeah, I mean, if you get a big Reign of Vengeance, oh, and Arthas as a solo tank. I like this though. Arthas Arthas is very strong right now. Um, he's got some really good survivability as well now. So I I like it. I like it. So Sonya solo lane probably for Please Van Murky. Probably. I guess you could go Falstad, but. I don't know. I don't I know would I, I like would that. assume Sonya solo lane because she's just got the sustain. Um, we'll probably she'll probably be up against Zul, and that could be a decently favorable matchup for her. While we see the the four man rotation between top and mid with uh, the rest. Yeah, and I guess for Maroon, it's probably gonna be Bala. That solos, I don't know, it's kind of an awkward. I guess Zula could solo, but it's not really a good situation. You actually want him to rotate. So I I, I guess it's going to be a Vala solo lane. Maybe. It, it, yeah, it'll be interesting. There's, because there's, there's no Thrall, there's no Zagara. 
yeah, Zagara was somebody that I didn't think of and is actually pretty good on this map. Um, but Instead I think, of maybe that Vala. I think if you if you look at Maroon's comp, they have the ability to bone prison someone, and then from there you can go into like Reign of Vengeance at slash Asmo Globe, and mm -hmm. that's going to be a ton of damage. Whereas if you go Zagara, it's more about like controlling space. And yes, she, her autos do quite a bit of damage. The Hydralisk especially does a lot of damage. But the Hydralisk doesn't immediately get on target. And if in the middle of a disengage, the Hydralisk is not going to help you that much. Like, they're, they could just run away from yeah. it. So. It's more like on-demand damage from yeah. Vala, plus a little bit more mobility. Um, and I guess when you don't see the warrior like that, sometimes you might it might be safer for you to think, well, like I'm going to go with Vala because I, like, I feel comfortable with the vault as opposed to playing Zagara and then ending mm -hmm. up against something like Arthas, where you get hit by the Howling Blast, and it's, it's going to be a bad time. Yeah, and, Zagara, so. and it'll be interesting to see how the Arthas talents. Um, there's there's enough melee that, um, and the, the name's escaping me, that allows you to get your root on your, uh, on your Frozen oh. Tempest. Oh, it's called... Um... Relentless Winter, maybe? Relentless maybe. Cold? It's a Death Knight talent in WoW. Yes. Oh, but it's Remorseless against, Winter. Rem yeah, against ah. against this team, that could be a very decent talent uh, for Lockdown, just because there is so much melee, uh, and that would also kind of ruin Karazim's dodge. Yeah, potentially. All right. So, on the side of Team Maroon, we have Sir Thinks A Lot on Karazim, Samael on Zul, Yeezus on Asmodan, <laughs> Grapeseed on Johanna, and Corsair on Vala. Uh, and then on the side of Please Van Murky, we have no Murkies, but we have Spork playing Sonya, McHammas playing Rhaegar, REA1 Murphy, which I assume is real Murphy, playing Lee Meg. Riley Coyoli playing Arthas, and Jyler playing Falstad. So everyone's just kind of postulating in the middle right now. Uh, we'll go see our solo lane. It looks like it's going to be Vala soon. You're right, Josh. Yeah, it's, it's kind be, of gonna be that Vala if you solo lane. if you don't if you don't put her there, then you're ending. You're gonna really sacrifice your roam. And so I understand why you would not want to do that. And wow, that's Zul clear. Getting those stacks right away for Yeezus as he ascends to the heights of Globehood. <laughs> and, uh, Looks yeah, like that... we've got four-man rotation rotating on Corsair right now. He's going to kind of pull back a little bit. And are we going to see some sort of weird four-man mid-top, four-man mid-bottom thing? I mean, you can do it. It's just the question is, what what is what are you getting out of it? And actually, Riley right now, trying to go on the back line. He's actually going to get hit by Bone Prison. He's now rooted to the ground, blinded. He should get out no problem. Great. It's a lot of damage though going out on him. Yeah, both sides honestly taking a lot of damage. Jyler and Real Murphy doing quite a bit with the poke um, as Riley went deep. And you're right, they're going mid bottom constantly. So now this Vala has to be really careful. Um, needs to just be very, very vigilant at all times and make sure the vault is ready. At the same time, though, because this is an Asmodan comp, this can really, this can really be counterproductive to putting pressure on that Asmodan who is mm -hmm. trying to get those stats. That's a great point because at, because of their rotation, the Asmodan is never threatened. No, it's basically like a day on the beach for him. But the beach is an ancient spider tomb. And his activities aren't volleyball, but rather dunking minions. So, and which uh, he's doing quite well. You're gonna have to keep us uh, updated on all of the the stacks. No, the stacking is great. He's already at 76 bonus damage. We're just past the two minute mark, and with Zul and Johanna in the rotation, I mean, it's just gonna be constant. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's gonna be pretty rough. Both teams. Uh, turning in a few gems right now. Level 4 reached at basically the exact same time, and they've just been kind of trading experience back and forth right now. Yeah, the, it's weird to see this kind of style, where they rotate out of the lane, like they go, they meet up in mid and they rotate out. 
Um, and like you said, I, I think in the long term, maybe better for Please Ban Murky to sort of force the issue with the Asmodan because they're not really getting any sort of advantage. They haven't been able to gank Vala because Vala is playing very safe in the bottom yeah. lane. And, and we're talking pretty close to 100 bonus damage. Yeah, absolutely. It's getting it's actually over 100 with that last globe. And now in the middle, actually, Team Maroon getting wrapped on by Real Murphy on Lee Ming, but they're just going to safely back out. And honestly, I like the Karazim here too, actually, in this comp more than I thought I would. I always love Karazim, but he's doing a great job of getting into the lane punching some minions and just getting everybody healed up that way so mm -hmm. uh i so build wise arthas it's looking like he went eternal hunger which is one of my personal favorite uh it's definitely more bruiser arthas he can yeah, end I, up doing a lot of damage with that i mean you could still go into some survivability talents later um i feel like because you go you don't get the howling blast upgrade at first level uh, you're, it's less about, um, like, trying to secure kills with the health. Obviously, you still want to do that, but because they're not rotating into the enemy lane anyways, like, it's it's less of an issue, truthfully. Yeah. Like, you don't need the cooldown reduction anyways. So he is going to get some extra offense. We will see the rune on Samuel. He's going to get out. Uh, Greens, or Grapeseed just blinding everybody. And really, neither side wanting to commit to a full gank, although Spork no. was looking there on Sonya. He was kind of hiding in the bush there, trying to see if they could get something started. Corsair trying to turn in. He's got 20 gems right now. Both teams actually have enough for web weavers to come. Yeezus up on top just continues to work against uh, Spork on that Sonya. And uh, both teams now kind of focusing on trying to get everything turned in. Yeah, and I actually want to point out one... Oh, Samuel taking a Ooh. lot of damage. But want to point out one quick thing. Force armor taken for Li Ming. This is a really, really good pick. I don't normally like it, honestly. I, I think this talent is not great in most situations, but against that globe stacking Asmodan, yeah, that's gonna help you a lot. 50% reduction is gonna be the difference between you almost dying or just kind of like taking significant but not nearly fatal damage. Yeah, and that's and that's a great thing to point out too, because that's ability damage. It's not like your auto attack damage like most normal blocks. Right, yeah, it's like a weird spell block type. Like, it's like a hybrid spell shield slash uh, block. And we actually have Li Ming fall in the bottom lane, I guess? I didn't see that, actually. I think that was bottom lane, though. Yeah, so. I, I don't know exactly what she died to. To Very be weird. completely honest. Oof. Samuel taking a lot of damage. He's going to get chunked down. But unfortunately, it looks like Vala was able to turn in, and Team Maroon's going to get the first set of level years. So XP's still very even, but in an Asmodan comp, you sort of expect that you would be a little bit behind because you need to protect that Asmodan, and Vala's actually going to fall in the bottom lane. So there, there's the first sort of fruits of that rotation that we were talking about, and we'll see if they get more. Sir, thanks a lot. Now rooted also. And I'm, now it's like, they can't really get anything from this wave now. Yeah, he he went in to try and save some of Vala's gems, and unfortunately that put him placement-wise in too bad of a position, and they were able to just finish him off. Yeah, that's always rough when you're a Karazim, and you know you think you can do something, like you think you can jump in there, and that doesn't always work out. So well, that's, Tyler... that's the problem with that Howling Blast, right? That's... That can be really rough against that Karazine because it can completely deny his uh, his leap. Yeah, exactly, and and that's and that's something that he's going to have to be aware of. I don't know if we'll see any talent adaptations for it because it looks like for, very standard right now for him. But I'll I'll keep my eyes peeled on that for you for the future. For the moment, Bone Prison actually going down on the cameras. The globe's starting to really hurt. Yeah. As please ban Murky just forced to get out. The, uh, ooh, Corsair wow. taking so much damage. Palm wasted, will not proc. But the the Reign of Vengeance was so close to securing a kill there, but did not. And instead, Corsair got a mouthful of arcane energy. He did, and I'm I'm really surprised. I mean, props to please ban Murky for no one dying. Uh, and they didn't have ults yet, but that they were able to all survive, and they got their ults now. They want to turn in. They have 75 gems. Spork alone has 40 of them and so he's gonna have to be really careful but the rest of the team is just not there Johanna's just trying to poke 
But uh, it just wasn't enough because Asmodan and Vala were down bottom grabbing the Giants. It's a good thing nobody died there trying to contest that point top because the team had basically decided by going down to that Merc camp that they were not going to contest. Like, there's no way yeah. to contest 3v5 like that. So uh, you don't want to die right before Web Weavers because that's basically the worst time to die. And they didn't. Um, they also didn't manage to contend the, contest the turn-in. But I think with this comp TPK, they shouldn't have too much of a problem cleaning these up. No, I don't think so. They've got they got quite a bit of damage. I mean, middle is already falling very fast. Vol has already got top down to half health. Bottom has the longest distance to go. It's going to start on the towers. But man, a beautiful palm onto Samuel. The <laughs> Cindergosa went out. It looked like Samuel's going to yeah. fall down. Grapeseed just running for her life. And uh, this is a really good push now by Please Ban Murky. They've got the Cindergosa on the fort. It's not going to do anything. They're going to be able to push really easily. This uh, Yeezus getting very low. The fort should fall. And uh, pretty good uh, mileage out of the Web Weavers. Huge flank by Corsair on Vala, securing kills with that Reign of Vengeance. Now Yeezus, low mana, low health, but in pursuit with the rest of his team. Spark should be fine here. Uh, actually gets hit by the Punish. Corsair oh. wants this. Corsair's going for this. And he is going to get it with Grapeseed. That's a I think lot Grape of Seed gems. Will yeah, Grapeseed will fall for that, so... I mean, not worth, although, like you said, they did lose a lot of gems. Riley does not pick them up, so those are lost. Yeah, no, that's... That was actually a pretty big play, and it... It seems like Please Ban Murky just overstayed their welcome a little bit. And because of that, Team Maroon is going to get a full turn in instantly and be able to put quite a bit of pressure on these forts. I actually want to give huge props to Corsair because he his flank basically won that. It, yeah, his flank with is a what beautiful reign of vengeance. Yeah, no, it, that fight doesn't happen like that unless he makes that flank and he connects with two on two people with reign of vengeance. So. Big props to him. Yeezus, I want to give you the Asmo stack update. We're at 268. So, uh, at pretty high. Minutes, that's pretty decent. You can see already that the, the stacks are really starting to hurt. Um, like, they're, like, the orbs are really starting to do a lot of damage to the low health targets. So, and it's um, it's really kind of unfortunate for Please Ban Murky right now. They're they're about a quarter of a level back, but they're, they're down a talent tier right now. The later this game goes, the harder it's going to be for them. And... There are no structures down yet, which does not bode well for, you know, getting a quick and early lead. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Maroon now, like, just firmly in control. They get to choose what they want to do. I love this rotation, actually. They're going to try and get Jyler. This fort has no ammo. The tower has some. Bless Shield comes out. The dunk does so much damage. Samuel should be able to get into range. Syndragosa will slow the rest of his team, but not Zul. The root actually misses Samuel, and he will clean up false. And I think this Arthas is going to fall pretty soon too, TBK. Oh, Corsair found Riley. He's going to do a lot of damage, and ugh, another 30 gems that aren't going to be able to be recovered. That's that's a huge loss, Josh. That was a great decision from Maroon. When they see those two heroes bottom, they'll be like, you know, we're rotating, and we're taking the, the aggressive rotation. Yeah, and they, it, the, good for the them for there. seeing there was no ammo left on that. Because if there was ammo left on that, that could have been a completely different situation. But without the ammo, you just can't really hold off 2v4 when it, your health's it, already low. It's like the fort isn't there, except it sort of blocks skill shots. Like, it might as well be a healing well that does nothing, because yeah. like, if it has no ammo, you're... you're sense of comfort is misplaced and, and honestly so. with that team maroon takes decisive control they take the aggressive bruisers all three forts fell and now they're gonna try for the boss and they, they should be able to do this I, I don't even think it's been sniffed out yet but please ban murky um if they had moved a little bit faster they might have been able to contest before 16 16 is very close now for maroon they are gonna move in but i think it's gonna be too late Nice Reign of Vengeance to block the course. The Palm goes out onto Corsair, but it is not popped, and he's going to go down. Samuel also follows. The boss is grabbed, but it's a two for nothing right now. Yeah, everybody's so low on the side of Please Ban Murky. The Globe comes in. McHammas is very low. Real Murphy is going to die as a result of that extra dot from the Globe damage. And now Grapesea wants to re-engage. Rhaegar really needs to get out of here. He's... Should not be anywhere near the front, and yeah, he just drops the totem. The dunk comes the in, though! The dunk! 
My oh. goodness. And that's what is scary. You just cannot wait around within range of that globe at low health. Look at that spork almost dying as well to another globe. And I mean, I, I really like what Please Ban Murky did with that. They were able to get in and get a few kills, but again, it's the same thing as before. They stayed too long. They didn't back in time to go deal with that boss, and two of their members were picked off as a result. Yeah, and and Maroon actually, but by getting by giving up some kills, uh, the XP deficit was evened a little bit for Please Ban Murky. But given like being behind and the catch up XP that you get from being behind, that was sort of inevitable. Like if you lose one or two people in a fight, um, but still they have a small window here where if they could force a fight. Before Please Ban Murky gets to 16, it would be greatly in their favor, especially with these stacks from Asmodee, which are now at 344. Wow. Yeah, Please Ban Murky, about a quarter level, they really need to get their soak so they can get on the same talent tier. Unfortunately, Team Maroon is one gem away from a full turn in, and that's not what Please Ban Murky wants right now, because all of these lanes are really pushed, Josh. Yeah, I, I actually want to say that it, it looks like, you know, it looks like Please Ban Murky isn't that far behind. They're about to hit 16. They'll be on the same talent tier. And that is true, but you expect them to be further ahead because of the Asmodee composition. That's simply not the case. That's basically money in the bank. And now actually Spork will be engaged on here. Uh, the Globe doing so much damage. Oh Skeletal Mages rooting everybody, basically. McCambas is going to try and get out of there, but Corsair is going to... Wow, Corsair just cleaning people up on Vala. Yeah, the the Vala play is excellent. The Ancestral went out to try and save Arthas, but just was not fast enough. And honestly, even if it had gone off, I don't know if they would have been able to save him completely. And now, they are marching on keeps. Yeah, I think if they group up, they should be able to get a keep. They are a little bit split here. They have the Siege Giants at the bottom doing some work. You need to be careful because... Jyler could definitely make them pay if they stay too long, and he looks like he's trying to do that. He, do he does just gust away. What the oh, dunk again? the dunk. Man, Jesus. With the on-point dunks just all game, and it's only going to get worse from here. Yeah, we're at 386, so we're getting pretty close to the four numbers. And uh, as you can see, the damage is already insane, especially with the level difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cinder Gosa goes out, the Web Weavers are in, but another ridiculous globe just chunking away at the health. Two Web Weavers going to be on the core. Skeletal Mages come out. The top Web Weaver is working on the keep as well, and this core is starting to fall. Rhaegar getting dunked again, and yeah, with all this pressure from Web Weavers and the control that they have of this area, that's going to be game for Team Maroon. That was, a, that was a pretty quick one at 16 minutes. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you... Team Maroon. Yeah, they should have gone murky. <laughs> fair. Fair. Yeah, it's that's legitimate. Uh, Team Maroon, really impressing. Grabbing a hold of that that lead and then just never letting go. And not only that, Jesus just making massive use of his... I mean, look at this. No deaths. 144,000 siege damage. 53,000 hero damage yeah that's over uh, 10k higher than the next highest person honestly those numbers are really great but there's a one specific number i want to point out and that is the fact that jesus did not die once yeah he was the only person in the game who did not die and when you are an asmodan and you the enemy team does not commit to shutting you down like we saw in the early game I mean, you, you'll you just get the stacks. Like, it, it's not rocket science to get the stacks, right? Like, if you have yeah. someone helping you, it's you just get the stacks. They, they just happen. And if, if no one pressures you or stops you from doing it, well, we that then what we just saw happens, where the dunks are insane, and, and it's constantly being vigilant to try and get away from them for the enemy team. Yeah, and I mean, that, that was the real problem, right? Is that... Please ban Murky did an opposite rotation mm -hmm. to Team Maroon right there at the beginning. And that opposite rotation, they didn't get any ganks off of it. They got they got Volo once. 
But that that was it. They didn't they didn't really get much off of it. But it allowed Asmodan to free farm completely, and so he had like basically 200 bonus damage within the first you know eight minutes, seven minutes or so. Yeah, and and that's the thing, right? Like if you could have killed Vala a couple times and forced people to come down and soak the lane. Um, then at least maybe that you're slowing down the stacks a little bit. So, but but that just she did get picked off one time, but it wasn't really enough to force the Asmin into playing any sort of different way than he was. So, no, no just uh, very good rotations on the side of Team Maroon. Very good Asmodan stacking. Honestly, yeah. they did a really really good job. And <laughs> I I want to give like a really big shout out to Corsair on that Vala. The flank in mid game, in the middle, as Please Ban Murky was pushing that middle fort, was really, I think, the turning point of that game. Yeah, and I think if you. I, I really like the way Corsair plays Vala, because you look at the enemy's team, and as long as you can account for where Sonya is, you could play You could play pretty aggressive. And, and he did that. Like, he had the kind of, like, my skill shots can't miss if I'm in your face killing you and he like absolutely wrecked people like we, as you said with the with Reign of Vengeance and that sort of lockdown is actually pretty hard for the enemy team to deal with like if Rhaegar and Sonya or Arthas and Rhaegar like any of the melee characters are grouped up uh, that's a ton of lockdown it's a lot of damage now too and I mean it's you're basically just it's the alley-oop, if yeah. you will. You know, like, yeah. it's the, hey, Asmo, dunk this, and you just throw it up, and then Asmo's like, Burr, and he yeah. just drops the globe. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. And Corsair actually went with a uh, very strong auto-attack build, too, which is why those, you know, just the basic auto-attacks are doing so much damage. I mean, you got Ranker at level 1, which is attack speed. You've got Manticore at four which is you know every third attack it's 60 percent extra damage and then searing attacks i love on searing top attacks of so that much. and then not that he got a chance to use it a whole lot but frost shot combined with executioner at 16 it's just so much damage frost shot is really good too just for asthma and like just being able to slow people so it's easier for him to aim the globes and get those dunks happening uh so really cool and yeah frost shot executioner is a combo that you can actually just take on its own. Like, you yeah. can just take at 13, 16. You don't need to specialize in multi-shot. You don't need to take the level 1 multi-shot talent if you don't feel no, like it. not at all. And and you could go, you could really go either way with it. And I, I really like that he went the full auto attack build. Because when, when you have searing attacks on, and you're getting executioner procs on people, like, that's a ton of damage. Mm -hmm. So, good stuff. Yeah, very good stuff. Well, congrats to Team Maroon on that win and uh yeah that was decisive that was that was fun to watch there was a lot of good dunks that game i must it i know it it hurts when you're on the other side of those dunks but as a viewer those are just really fun to watch <laughs> i'm actually surprised by how much asthma and play we've seen in chair league i, I find that yeah. a lot He's of the time very common on tomb of the spider queen yeah but i just find like a lot of the time um, you try and run an Asmodan comp and maybe you don't have players who are really confident in playing with it either because the Asmodan player is not confident or else uh, the people who should be supporting him aren't as confident but we've seen a few good games now where like there was just really solid Asmodan play and it, the, ba yeah. the game basically rolled out the way it would in a, in a pro scenario which is if you don't, if you don't pressure that Asmodan mm -hmm. he's going to become a beast and by the end of the game he's basically like a mobile demonic artillery piece yeah just, and just you know. like chunking you for a third of your health and for half of your health every every single globe yeah it's it's pretty nuts but congrats to team maroon on their win uh that's it for us tonight guys just one game